The Tuya Bay is one of my favorite places in the world. It's a magnificent landscape. There are mountains roaring up behind it. Glaciers come off those peaks right down to sea level. And you have a bay that is unique along this coast. Plafka came to Latuya Bay with his colleague, Don Miller, in 1953. They came to survey for oil. We didn't find any petroleum in Latuya Bay, but what we did find was something that happened on a cataclysmic scale, and uh, we spent uh, a, a large part of our time trying to understand it. What these scientists discovered in the 50s was the evidence for a previously unknown force of destruction. The evidence lay not in the rocks, but in the trees. One thing that was very peculiar is the fact that mature forests did not extend all the way down to the shoreline, as was true almost everywhere else in this general area. Instead, there were bands of younger trees below mature forest, and the uh, line at which the trees of different ages joined we call the trim line. Nothing like this had been recorded before. They suspected the surviving trees from just above the trim line might contain evidence of what had happened many years earlier. We cut selected trees, took samples from those uh, slices and sent them to the Juno Forestry Research Lab and asked them to count the rings and give us an analysis of just what happened to those trees. This is a photo of a section of a spruce tree that was taken by Don Miller and George Plafka in 1953 in Latuya Bay. The tree was right above a trim line in the bay, and it tells a very interesting story. The early growth in this tree was very good, nice wide rings. All of a sudden, it changes something happened to it. Something must have hit it very hard on this side over here. There's a large scar. The tree ring analysis showed a violent force had struck the entire shoreline of the bay. The forest looked like it had been hit by a giant wave. For the scientists, it seemed impossible. No wave in history had ever reached anything like this high. There was some powerful force at work here that created a wave possibly 150 meters high. Uh, that's uh, equivalent to, say, the height of a 50-story building. And uh, we just didn't have any idea of, of what could do that. Even the most powerful waves, tidal waves, known to science by their Japanese name, tsunami, could not have created such destruction. This wave had been caused by something very different. Well, we didn't know what caused the wave. We considered earthquakes, and earthquakes cause tsunami, but uh, those tsunamis are usually less than 10 to 15 meters, and here we have something that's 10 times as high as that. Mm -hmm. 